The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good morning. This is David. Good morning. <laughs> good afternoon, depending on where you are. Good evening. This is David Reynolds, your host for FMCC World FM Day, which is really World FM Week this year, 2017. Uh, we have with us today Olamide Aena. Uh, he'll be speaking on finding the sweet spot in facility management. Next slide. We don't have any particular logistics today, so just uh, sit back and enjoy. The PowerPoint uh, will be available, recorded webinar will be available, and a PDF uh, on request a few days after the webinar. Next slide. Vision and mission of FMCC here. Basically, we exist to serve the facility facilities management community in general, and our membership in particular, trying to be a resource for FM wherever we find it. Next slide. We do offer, specifically asking the expert, finding a consultant as needed, locating a speaker, <coughs> online educational resources, and we support the Knowledge Library, the IFMA Knowledge Library. Next slide. We have generous sponsors, ISS, Greg Moore, Daikin Group, GFMA, ISAR1. And certainly, if you're interested in sponsoring, we certainly would appreciate hearing from you. Next slide. And so, we lead into World FM Day, World FM Week, 2017. Next slide. The core team this year, pictured there in our august glory, uh, we thank you for being with us today. Next slide. And a great host of authors, our, our guests today among them. Next slide. And Olamide, it's over to you. Talk a little about yourself and carry on through the presentation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Depends on where you are um, around the world. My name is Olumide Aino. I'm from Nigeria. I'm the Managing Director of Green Facilities Limited. I'm also a member of the Strategic and Tactical Action Group of Facility Management Consultancies Council, FMCC, IFMA. Uh, my background is in mechanical engineering. I have a master's degree in facilities management, master's degree in project management. And currently, I'm a student trying to research uh, in um, related to so sustainability practices in facilities management. I'm focusing on public buildings, especially in Nigeria. See how uh, sustainability is included or embedded in their processes and also to check how the uh, FM practices or building activities impacts on the environment. Also, I am um, I, the founder of FM Talk 360, where we uh, focus mostly on um, campaigning for facilities management as a profession, you know, uh, raising awareness to the government, especially here in the part of the world, and also to clients or would-be clients so that they understand uh, the efficacy and also the potency of facilities management and how it affects their business and enables their people. And uh, good enough, the World FMD, we're, we're looking at enabling positive experiences. So we try to campaign, talk about it, do a radio show, a blog, you know, move all around and try to raise the awareness more often. Uh, well, that's a little bit about me. Uh, we move along. In uh, our objective for this virtual conference, we'll be looking at the value facilities management service had to your organization when all the, these basic elements are applied in the right proportion, 
and not, not to forget our subject of discussion today, finding the sweet spot in facilities management. There is a sweet spot. I want to understand this sweet spot. I want to understand how to achieve this sweet spot, this unique computing space, this value offering. I want to understand it today. I want to learn how to remain competitive with unique solutions in meeting customers' ever-changing needs over competitors around us. This is for business owners who are in the facilities management profession. And we'll also be gaining new strategies in the continuous delivery of best-in-class solutions that will enable us to continually attract top talents to our organization. People make up this profession. FM is not just for buildings to look attractive. FM is not just for aesthetic. FM is not just to focus on technology and uh, look at the shiny things about building. FM is for people. Without people building, building is just going to be like uh, like uh, a picture. It's just going to be like uh, art and craft. It should just be like going to a museum, just looking at the building. Oh, this building has been there for 1,000 years, not been touching the fabrics. So, so without understanding on how to raise top talent, how to, you know, how to enable them to, get, to achieve their purpose, how to improve their work productivity, then we may not be doing FM. Now, also, we'll be looking at understanding the relevance of the triple bottom line. That's the people, the planet, and profit in identifying the sweet spot in facilities management. Now, facilities management is, is now a buzzword. A place here in Africa is a buzzword. Everybody's into facilities management. But are they really doing facilities management? These are some of the key things we'll also be looking at. And we have various definitions of what facilities management is all about. IFMA has a definition, International Facilities Management Association has a de definition. BIFM, the British Institute of Facilities Management, has its own definition. FMA Facilities Management Australia has its own definition. Uh, SAFMA, that is South Africa Facilities Management Association, have their own definition. And one of the definitions that really strikes me is the IFMA definition, which looks at facilities management as a profession that encompasses multiple disciplines to ensure functionality of the built environment by integrating people, place, process, and technology. So it has interdependency on other disciplines. So we're looking at that, uh, we're forging our air to explain uh, more about that. Now, in, in the quest to provide tailor-made services to our clients, based on the need for flexibility, aside the interest to focus on their core of expertise, to increase work productivity, to reduce costs, a lot of reasons that uh, uh, facilities management is like a four-edged sword, if I would like to put it like that. It impacts your know, people positively on the workplace, on the process, and with the use of technology as an enabler for you to achieve your core objectives, the vision and mission of the organization. Now, it, it's it's a, a process that that gives results to these basic elements that we've just mentioned: the people, process, and technology. If you look at the schematic diagram to your right and side down the screen, we see this subset, this key ingredients or these key elements or these key factors that makes up FM, going by the definition of IFMA, which I solely agree with. You see how they interplay. They are not in silos. They interplay. They are connected with 
technology as a good enabler, it affects the people. It affects the way people walk, live, and play. With the process, it influences the speed. It influences the way work is done. It even affects quality. It affects, it helps in supervision. It helps in getting feedback on what you are doing. Are we doing it well? Are we doing up to standard? What are the challenges? What are the bottlenecks? The throughput in our processes, you map your process, you map your process, you review, you review, you do gap analysis to identify area where areas where there are leak probably in cost, leak in, uh, in, in, in quality services, leak in any areas that could affect the organization from achieving its aim. So they are interrelated. And when now talk about the people, which is at the fulcrum, at the, at the focal point of facilities management. You know, it, we can go on and on and on and explain them. Now, we want to look at this sweet spot. What is this sweet spot? Now, this sweet spot was actually identified in the game of sports, both in soccer, in badminton, in um, long tennis, in table tennis. Now, we use we be describing we using the 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 tool let me use the word tool used by the long tennis player my favorite long tennis player by the way is roger federer is one about 18 or 19 grand, grand slam and the guy is, looks as if he's getting younger now there's a part on the bat whereby if the player eats the ball on that zone, at uh, that zone appropriately, it gives it maximum impact. So it pushes the ball, it drives the ball from point A to the desired point where it wants you to reach on the field of play, on the lawn when you're playing lawn tennis, on the table when you're playing table tennis, on the field of play when you're playing football. So that part, that area is called the sweet spot where you have maximum impact. So if you relate it to FM, where we want to identify that sweet spot, which area, how can we, which area can we eat? Which part of the four elements can we eat that will give us maximum impact, that will affect the core business of any performing organization in the built environment? So, for example, based on what we have here, he said Swiss sport is a place where a combination of factors result in a maximum response for a given amount of effort or force. Now, the ball bounces on the bat. The player, Roger Federer, still have to eat the bat with an amount of force for impact. Now, in my basic physics, I learned that in the third law of Newton, third law of motion, Newton's third law of motion, it says to every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. So if the action of the player is to eat the ball, there's a reaction that sends the ball based on the force applied by the bat on the ball to a desired location or point. So in facilities management, the onus lies on the players. It lies on the professional to be able to combine these four factors appropriately or these four elements appropriately to be able to get the desired result, which is what? For organizations to meet their core objectives to achieve their vision and mission. Now we run, we, we, we run along. Our facilities management service provider and functional can identify their sweet for unique competence space to enable them to continually add value and make profit is dependent on the synchronization of this basic element. I've said that again. So it, the, the Swiss board is also a place where you operate at your best because all the four elements are knitted together 
are working in a symbiotic relationship, are synchronized together. Just in, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm using a little bit of uh, technical examples in expressing, explaining my point, but I would like to be as uh, lay as possible so that everybody can actually appreciate it. In a car engine, we have um, some engine that use one piston, two, three, or four. Some use six, some use 12 cylinder engines. And there is an amount of metered amount of fuel, mixture of fuel air that must get into the combustion chamber for a rapid combination of this element, this fuel mixture air, and also energized by electricity. Short circuit, just short electricity for there to be power, to be able to drive the piston downwards and move the shaft, move the all parts of the body for a vehicle to move. But if this mixture, if this fuel air and electricity are not in the appropriate combination, this car will not move. That's why sometimes the engineers say the car misfires or the car is bringing out black smoke or the car is not moving properly. This is as a result of the fact that these elements are not in the right proportion. So the sweet spot is a place whereby you operate at your best, whereby there is a result based on your input, the appropriate combination of your input. Now we're looking at these elements one after the other. It says it is also a unique place where your strength and capability, which is second to none, lies. The footballer, the long tennis player, applies force. Don't let us forget about the Newton's third law of motion. To every action, that's the force. There is equal and opposite reaction. There's a force that we need to move an object from point A to point B. And there's a force that we need to apply in terms of our people, process, place, and technology for us to be able to achieve our sweet spots, for us to be able to maintain our unique competing space, for us to be able to protect our unique competing space so that we don't have issues with poor service delivery, with uh, unsatisfied clients, with, uh, with increase in costing and so for us to have in cost increment or you know for us to mismanage fund for us to have issues of dilapidated buildings for us to have issues of activities affecting the environment negatively and for us to you know go against regulate regulations and laws of the land based on activities in the building now, let's consider the strategic sweet spot model according to the Harvard Business Review. It says the strategic sweet spot of a company is where it meets the customer needs in the way that rivals can, given the context with which it com competes. That's Collins and Rockstar 2008. It said this is also the firm's opportunity space for creating a uniquely differentiated value offering as a sweet spot. Now, having the right people doing the right job, with the right process, with an enabling environment, and also with a technology as an enabler, as a catalyst, could result, could help the organization to identify unique value offerings. And this unique value offerings comes where you understand your customer needs and you give to your customers, you meet and exceed their expectations based on what they want. And this requires this, this um, requires the FM organization to get feedback from clients, to analyze their needs, check their complaints, review process, review standard operating procedures to um, close the gap, remove, eliminate, issues that may arise that may have caused the uh, the poor service delivery or 
uh, dissatisfied customer uh, experience. So, you know, mirroring into all these four elements, how are we performing in this area? Take, for example, our people. Have they been trained lately? What are the unique skills they have? to meet the ever-changing needs of client. Client wants to stay in his or office and make complaints and get a feedback almost instantaneous from the performing FM company that see my roof is leaking, my bulb is gone off, I need a replacement now. And the bulb are replaced almost immediately. And that's, those are kind of things clients want to hear. Those are kind of type of things that makes clients happy. Now we move to the place. How about the workplace? How is the workplace affecting the people for them to be productive at work? Is it a place that creates flexibility? Is it a place that, that helps for uh, staff or for co-workers to integrate, to relax, to talk, to exchange ideas, to communicate effectively? The workstation are they comfortable? Is uh, are they uh, are ergonomics uh, con considered in the design of the workplace, in the design of the seat, the place? Is it too cold? Is it too hot? You know, these are little two factors that need to be assessed based on international best practices. Now, I I I, I articulated here that the sweet spot is a competitive domain in which the company succeeds in meeting customer needs in a way that rivals cannot, and it is value-based. Value, as defined by Michael Potter, is about customer service experience at a reasonable cost. Unique customer service experience at a reasonable cost. The customer is happy. is it, happy. It defines the value. It, 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 it assesses you. Has this thing been fixed? Fine. What can we do for this thing not to happen again? And for us to do it at a minimal cost and for it to affect the people in the workplace positively as well as the environment. R running along now, the unique competing space that the Swiss Court also provides a unique competing space once established as important economic pricing implication. It says the firm apart from its competition in respect of its ability to price its value offering at a premium by virtue of its uniqueness and superiority of what of that value offering. Now if a performing FM company is being able to deliver value, deliver solutions, meet the client's needs, exceed their expectations at the right cost, save cost for them, avoid cost for them avoid them to be sued to call because they are violating regulation, avoid unsafe, unsafe conditions, avoid accident at the workplace, you know, help their people to be productive. And at the end of their financial year, they see an increase in terms of revenue generated, profitability after tax, the building is looking nice, the, the, the value the building is now 10 times the value at which uh, 10 times the value before they employ or after they employ the facility management company to take care of the building to manage it i know that those are the kind of things the clients will be happy to see and at that rate you can have a discussion with your clients to review your cost you can actually command premium uh, cost for your services and they will be considered that these people are doing so well They've helped us to meet our core objectives. They've helped us to meet our mission. They've helped us to meet our vision. They've helped our revenue to grow, to all upscale from probably 9% to 25% within three years, within two years. They've helped to reduce unnecessary risk. No incidents, no accident. Everybody is happy. The productivity of our, of our people has increased. And we also, we are, we've been able to bring unique solution, unique products and services for our own client because we, we, we work in a place that is very, very conducive, a place that is safe, a place that is considered human well-being. You know, it's very, very easy for you to demand. And your, 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 your competitors will be wondering, what are these guys doing well? 
that this organization has renewed their contract over and over again. They've given them award. They've even given them more of their facilities to manage worldwide or na na nationwide. So the firm sweet spot is a domain in which the firm creates and delivers a value offering in response to customer changing in, in a way that competitors cannot. The sweet spot portrays the domain schematically, which we are going to look, uh, we are going to see shortly. The value proposition substantiates the essence of the unique and superior value offering suggested by the domain. Now, this is the strategy six spot. Six spot this is what we've been talking about. We have three cycles. Like I said, for the four elements as identified by IFMA, they are not in silos. They are relating together. They are alive. They are alive. They are moving. They are moving together. The competitor's offering. What the competitor is offering. The customer's needs. This is always changing. This is dynamic. Your computer's offering may be static, depends on the type of computer that you are looking at that is available at that time. Then your company's capabilities is also very critical. This place, and there is a spot that really that connects you with your customer. That spot can either expand or contract, depending on your value offering. If your offering lacks value, they will contract. The contrast and your computer's offering will shrink your own unique computing space, otherwise called your sweet spot. What makes an FM company deliver values? It's its ability to identify the customer needs and create or acquire skills, unique skills to meet such needs. If your clients want a report on a daily basis, your client, your client says, guys, I want to be able to assess what you guys are doing. I want to be able to, to rate your performance on the go. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait until the end of the month. I want to be able to rate your performance almost immediately. Can you do that for me? I'm considering giving this project to another FM company. And you, you will have even forecasted that you should have been a solution from your own end. And you go all around, you bring up the solution because you have trained your staff in a way that your, your competitors cannot train them. So you have acquired those capabilities. You've acquired them, you understand what your clients need, and you are able to provide such services to your clients for your clients business not to just to provide a service because you just want to provide service we want to provide service because your client needs it to be able to also compete in his own unique space to be able to also stay in business to be able to also gain have more profitability and gain more ground in their own unique market space and why your customer is successful, why your customer is gaining more ground, your customer will be able to have more funds to play with to meet your own premium demands and also to forge ahead in investing in solutions, unique solutions that probably you brought up to them that, see, the way we can do this thing is to shrink this space and attack technology that will help us to achieve our aim. So it helps them on the long run. So it's a win-win situation. Therefore, without your sweet spot or your unique, unique space, keeps expanding and it also reduces the space of your computers because you weigh them off because you have already protected your zone appropriately. The, the, there's, a, there's a buzzword, you know, it's common among businessmen, facilities managers, and other professionals. Uh, focus on your sweet spot. Focus on your sweet spot. What does that mean? For an FM business, I mean the intersection of its strengths, its customers' requirements, its competitors' weaknesses, and by identifying this intersection, it provides clarity, creates opportunity, and maximizes success. And the important thing is that Facility managers, 
should also analyze what their competitors are doing and what they are doing well. Facility managers will also analyze the weakness of their competitors and take advantage of it by doing something uniquely better than what they are doing to be able to weed them off and for them not to shrink their own sweet spot. According to which trend trend, Charlie's sweet spot in business is the insertion of all its uniqueness, its convergence of all its capabilities and provide the best competitive outcome uh, appropriately. That is uh, the key things and is important for us to consider that. R running along, we'll, we'll be looking at the strategy, how to form the strategy for us to be able to identify a unique competing space or otherwise called the Swiss spot. For, for most FM companies, we should be looking, what, what, what we should be looking out for is to identify where our services will create that biggest impact. And it's about calling the entire team together from the CEO, the chairman, the president, or the vice president of the company, calling his team together. Hey guys, we, are, we have established this organization. It's not an NGO, it's not a non-for-profit organization. We have established it to do business, to make profit, and also to add value, to write our name in the sounds of time. So you need to come together just like in any football game or in soccer game or in any game athletics there's always a coach there's always a leader there's always a mentor who calls everybody together and discuss and have a game plan this is how we are going to hit our competitors this is how we are going to penetrate and can discuss how you're going to penetrate the market you can discuss how you're going to chase your competitors away far 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 away from your customers and from there, you identify all the opportunities. You identify all the threats. You'll be able to scan your business environment. Which, there's so many models. There's a pe pe pest model, there's pest tool, a lot of models that you can use to, to analyze your business environment and to see where you can play, the market you can play, the market you shouldn't play now, but you can put, put it aside and the next five years you monitor so many other things that can affect the market, government policies, um, uh, re regulations, the, the economy, and so many other factors to consider before going into a business. So the, the sweet spot of FM is where the best music is heard, which can be synonymous to adding value continuously. According to Steven, he says, facility management should add value to the provision of reliable building services pleasant facility staff, solution for facility needs and demands, resourcefulness in solving facility problems and innovation in increasing workplace productivity. That is the essence of effort. That is the essence of facilities management. So if as a customer you're experiencing anything out of what Steven has identified here, it means you are not experiencing facilities management you're experiencing something entirely different. Something entirely different. Let's go over the definition, if my def def definition again. It says, facilities management is a profession that encompasses multiple disciplines to ensure functionality of the built environment by integrating people, place, process, and technology functionality if you have building system, they are not functioning appropriately, and you have service providers or contractors or vendors serving you, saying or claiming that they are doing facilities management, they are not doing facilities. You are still far, far, far from reality. Far, far from reality. It further added that the sweet spot of facilities management can be felt when it is used to reduce expenses. Now we'll be looking at the four methodologies that he has identified and the strategy where FM can contribute in reducing organizational expenses. Now, this is it. In productivity, FM helps 
to increase your workplace effectiveness and efficiency. Because you have set up a facilities management company, it, that does not automatically reduce productivity. You have to work. You have to work. Uh, you have to put strategies in place. You have to study the market. You have to study your staff. You have to weigh it, do a gap analysis on what the strength of your staff, what skills do you guys have, what skills do we have, what's our vision, where do we want to compete, which market do we want to compete, is it in the FM technology market, is it in the real estate, do we want to compete with public buildings alone, do we want to com compete in private buildings alone, do we want to compete in, in, in schools, in colleges, in universities, in polytechnics, in churches, in mosques, where do we want to compete, you, that needs to be defined. So that you not be uh, like uh, someone in, in, in the Pacific Ocean that doesn't know his direction, swim, no compass for direction to, to tell you where you're going to. So as you're swimming, you have a direction. Just like swimmers in the Olympics, they know oh, before they can win the goal, probably they need to go run, swim, two and four, ten times or three times for them to win the Olympics. So they need to know how to do the breaststroke, the, the, the butterfly, a lot of styles they need to learn before they can win the Olympics. So you need to pull your team together, you need to have a strategy with the top, top guy, with the c suit to be able to know how to increase workplace effectiveness and efficiency. So it doesn't just fall on you, the efficiency or productivity of your people just don't just increase all of a sudden, there must be an impact, there must be a force that you need to apply. That takes back, us back to Newton's third law of motion, there must be a force. There must be a force that we need to apply to be a game changer. In terms of innovation, how innovative are we looking at what we have on ground? How can we enhance facilities and business operations? How can we reduce unnecessary accident in the building? Are we, are we ready? Are we prepared for emergencies? In case of terrorist attack, are we prepared how prepared are we? Are we practiced? Do, do we have, how, how, how often do we have our fire drills? Our uh, equipment, our uh, fire life safety equipment, are they functional? What process can we put in place to be ensure that we monitor all our building systems to know how they are performing? Oh, do we need to integrate the building with building information system, building information modeling? In integrating with the computer data facilities management, computer maintenance management system, what technology can we use? Do we need to employ more people? Do we need to let our people go? Do we need to train them? You know, what, what, what ideas can we put on board? Do we need to get consultants in this area that can help us to map our processes for us to be able to deliver better solutions, direct solutions to our clients? In terms of quality, how do we measure our quality? Still identify all these four elements that are very, very important to adding value in facilities management. And I just want to bring this to our remembrance about the 11 competencies identified by IFMA for us to be a competent or a professional facilities management. Quality is part of it, human factor. We talk about safety is part of it, technology is part of it, operations management, operations maintenance is part, is, is part of it, business and, and finance is, is, is part of it, emergency preparedness is part of it, business continuity is part of it, environmental storage is part, part of it, leadership and strategy is part of it. So these are core competencies that facilities managers must acquire to be able to have that value, to be able to improve, to be able to help your customers to meet their needs. In terms of safety, it's important that we incorporate safety in our workplaces. We have a process, we have an operating procedure for safety. We do our toolbox every day, not because we just have to do that, because our supervisor is watching us, because we need to continually learn, continually remind ourselves of our duties, of what we need to do. And it shouldn't be boring. We can be more creative. We can do our toolbox meetings, talk about safety, singing, 
the dancing. You can take our people outside the office, to the park, to the public places, and discuss and get feedback. The top management also should pick much interest in terms of safety and let people interact, let people relate with each other so that it will be very, very easy for them to report incidences. So that once the incidents are reported, root cause analysis is activated and identify the root cause so that such issues does not occur anymore. And to my left hand side on, on the screen, look at the triple bottom line which is the people the planet and the profit and at the center of it it's the purpose and vision which we can also link to sustainability and this is related to the four elements identified by ifma which is the people process place and technology these guys are related these guys talk to each other these guys talk to each other, they, they express, they give the view, the reality of what is happening in the built environment. So whatsoever we do as facilities managers, we should consider the people. Now the people is coming up again in the triple bottom line to tell you how important people are, our social life, how important it is. FM is for me, FM is for me, FM is for people. Without the people, there is no FM. FM is for people. We are not managing buildings because the building just have to look nice. We are managing buildings because people are in that building and they need to work for them to be able to achieve their overall objective. It's important that we consider these four major elements so that we can produce a sweet spot which eventually adds value to the customer's unique Complete, uh, unique and ever changing names. Now, in terms of talent management, still we still are the people element. I'm concentrating so much on the people element because it's uh, one of the focal points to for any FM company to be able to perform and perform excellently. In, in one of my articles, I talked about talent management in the built environment, a strategy for competitive advantage, a strategy whereby you can even have, you, 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 can, you can gain more ground, you can have more market share in your business than your competitors because of the top talent that you've been able to get, you've been able to train, you've been able to identify their strengths and weaknesses and train them articulately to be able to deliver best-in-class solutions. Yeah, I discussed about people aspect of mind and built, built environment as the most important factor, which is required to stay competitive and enables an FM company to always have an edge in the market. And that's the capability we discussed about. You know, we look at the three elements in terms of the sweet spots. We talk about the competitors' offerings, what the competitors are offering in the market, what the customer needs, and what the client you, the performing facility management company, is offering to your current client or will be client. So it's one that determines how you move up the ladder. It's one that determines because it's still these people that engage with the customers directly. It's still these people that talk to customers every day and relate with them on a daily basis. In the end, no matter how fantastic, no matter how, how fantastic the FM strategies may look like, which ob obviously captures the process, use of technology as a process enabler, it is still the people that we execute them. No matter how rich the processes are, no matter how flexible the workspace is fantastic. If you get to that building, or oh, you have swimming pool in the middle of the office, you have a place where you can rest, tea and coffee are served per minute, per second. You can walk 24 seven. There's a driver that will pick you to wherever you want to go. The internet is, internet access is fast. Their server is hosted in the cloud. Their server is hosted in the heavens. There are no issues, space optimization is perfect. But when it comes about the people, giving them the required training, knowledge on how to address customer needs, then that FM company has failed. It will not be able to meet the customer's 
ever changing needs. So it's important for FMs to focus on top talent, managing talent, identifying talent, and building them up to the level at which they can challenge other competitors in the FM market. There's a saying that a trained staff is an asset to his company, and an untrained staff is a liability. So it's important for performing FM companies to consider that to invest solely in their team, their people. The continuous delivery of value through the application of the sweet spot, the people aspect of the business that must be taken seriously with appropriate strategies to keep the team up to date in customer service, new emerging trend FM practice, and also motivate them to continually deliver value. This is critical. I agree, this is critical for continuous delivery of value is important that we bring our people up to speed. Now oh, there's an argument that value, value adding activities within the organization are predominantly achieved by managing processes. This takes us to the next element, which is the process. Now, to do a little of recap, we've been looking at these four elements, the synchronization of these four elements applying them appropriately with the amount of energy and the amount of force with the amount of right amount of quantity right amount of 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 force of dexterity of energy to be able to give us a desired result now according to frederick pensioner the strategy swiss pole is a place where passion ability talents align with opportunities to solve economic, social, and environmental problems. I agree with it over and over again. Passion, which are very important for a process to work, is still the same people that will help the process to work, that will make the process to work. So we are still going back to the people aspect of achieving our sweet spots, of identifying our sweet spot, of finding our sweet spot in facilities management. So these people have to be motivated. They have to be people that have passion to be able to pull round holes, round pegs in uh, round holes and square pegs in square holes so, they, so that there will be a fit, there will be a connection into whatsoever you are doing. So imagine you have the right people on the bus, you have the right people on your team. I want to go for a competition, you want to play the game of soccer, you want to play the game of long tennis, you want to go for swimming. You want to go for spelling bee and you have the right thing because of what they have the passion for what they want to do. Their abilities are inherent, they are latent, but with the passion and much of training of skill development through identifying the gaps and filling those gaps with appropriate learning and training, they will to deliver, they will to follow up the process. They'll be excited to follow up the process. To do whatever they need. So to find the strategy to support is also essential for any business. It's a sport whereby passion, purpose, potential merges with the needs of targeted audience. So to find this to support may not be easy, it's challenging. We've, we've been talking about people, 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 training, training, skills, like unique skills acquisition. It costs a lot of money. It requires a lot of planning. It requires a lot of dedication. It requires a lot of energy from the performing team and it's it's deliberate it's a deliberate thing that has to be decided by the c-suite of the organization so it's something that you have to do over and over again imagine uh with roger federal imagine how many times he has practiced on the tennis court how many times they have practiced to do those long long passes those very very hard and impactful First serve, first serve to destabilize his opponent. First serve, take for example, while he's playing against Rafael Nadal, that all my service, I must get all the points for all my service. So all his first service must be 
a top notch must be impactful must land at the right post not outside the court but within the lines within the frames of the court the tennis court so there's practice there's a lot of planning there's a lot of resource allocation that is required to do so it's a deliberate thing it's not something you just wish for I, I, I was reading something by Tina Charles, one of my mentors in facilities. I have a lot of her books that I've read. And she talks about saying, where I am today in my career requires a lot of dedication. It was deliberate. I can't just sit down and wish it that someone is going to do it for me. I can't just sit down and wish it. I'm just going to, this knowledge, I'm just going to go into my, into my brain. I can't just say abracadabra and voila. The knowledge is there. I have to sit down, study. I have to call my professional colleagues. I have to call consultants. And that's why we are here, FMCC, we are consultants, where you have enough resources for people to help you to achieve your purpose in the organization. Now, quickly, there, there's a case study which is very, very interesting that we need to look out for to be able to give us a practical example of what we're talking about and it's about caterpillar and komatsu caterpillar is an american company that has been in existence in the 1970s and doing uh, before robert uh, before what the um, the md of uh, caterpillar when they had some issues came in you know, there were a lot of downturns. Capital was so rich, they were successful. <clears throat> Excuse me. They were successful. They decided to go into tow trucking. So, oh, we have made a mark. Our revenues, oh, fantastic revenues. We made a lot of money. What can we do? We can buy the whole world. We can buy any organization. So they bought tow truck. They were doing tow trucks. And most of their resources were going to tow truck businesses and tow, tow, tow motors. And, and, uh, all of a sudden, you know, there was this company there, Komatsu, at the corner, at the corner, just like a rat eating your cheese, at the corner, just watching and looking at you, studying you, the way you are studying your computers, your computers are studying, looking at your strength. Oh, these guys are strong, they don't let us compete, we are just going to waste our resources. But this area, I think they are weak. Let's fire them, let's push them. And they discovered that Caterpillar was putting all of his resources, almost all his resources, into tow motor business. So they were losing concentration, they were losing ground in the market space. So Commerce was doing a lot of advert, they were losing a lot of machine design, product redesign, a lot of uh, after sales services, they were doing a whole lot of things, getting closer to the customers, taking the customers away from caterpillar telling them that see we are from asia we're from japan but trust me we have flexibility our price are cheaper with durability we'll give you 10 times what caterpillar is giving you and at the minimal cost caterpillar is cheating you the cost is so high here yeah, for the cost of one for, for the price of one we can give you three or four trucks or three or four heavy head moving equipment and we're going in ground their revenue increases their profitability increases and stuff like that you know robert who is the author he argued that these strategies of caterpillar and tow motors were incompatible and this comes about knowing where your strength lies where does our strength lie as a performing facilities management company you need to identify it. You need to identify the market where you want to compete, where you should compete. Don't just compete in any market. You need to look inward. Do the SWOT analysis. Identify it. If you can't do it, get a consultant to help you do it. You need to do this very, very important. Don't just try and test in any waters. Test the waters that you are familiar with. Let somebody help you to test the waters. He says, it, the Caterpillar strategies and tow motors were incompatible. So there was a mismatch and it undermined both businesses. So focus was lost. So they, they lost a lot of money. 
So it depleted CAD's competing advantage. This was in addition to the attack by their major competitor, who, who myself, they were just around the corner trying to wait, see how they will fall. And they changed their logan to eat, eating the cat. Eat the cat. That was their slogan at that point. So it took a man, George Schaffer, the CEO of Caterpillar, between 1960 and 1990, that was about four years, to do a turnaround of Caterpillar. He looked at it. He said, guys, we have to throw everything away. We have to go back to our first law. We have to go back to our strategy. We have to go back to the vision of our founding fathers for Caterpillar. Why are we here? That's the first question. What is our vision? What is our mission? Our mission is to do what? Design, fabricate, produce heavy duty equipment, head moving equipment, and not tow motors. So it was a very tough decision. It was a deliberate decision that they just had to go back to their first law. So they had to rethink their process. And that's where you map your process. That's where you do cut analysis. Where are we? We are over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. You need to do that gap analysis. You do you 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 determine when you want to do it, but do it as often as possible to be able to be sure that you're on the right track. And you need to compare to what the computers are doing, and you need to compare forecast to what your customers might need in no distant time. Don't feel too comfortable because the numbers are growing. You don't know, maybe there's a coma to somewhere watching you eating a cheese, eating part of your cheese, taking your business gradually and waiting for you to fall. And falling will eat you. So the, the, the commas will chase the cat, chase caterpillar to the corner of the room, chase them, almost consuming them before the savior, Joshua came to rescue caterpillar. So that, that's it. If it is not a deliberate act. It's not deliberate to understand your unique computing space, to understand your capabilities, to develop yourself. It will be very difficult to protect or to find your sweet spot. Robert said, he concluded that Caterpillar will focus his energy and attention on the continuous provision of value which later helped them to bounce back and take back their unique computers or otherwise called Swiss ball from Komatsu. He explained further that Glenn Barton in 2004 reminisced at that time that they went through a period of time in which they closed a lot of factories and to be and be trying to become a low cost source, not necessarily to compete on price, but to make profit on the prices at which we were already selling our products just to break even before Komatsu put us out of business. Therefore, the sweet spot of fasting money can be discovered when the very best is obtained from each of the four major factors that defines a performing FM company. They have a highly motivated team with clear-cut understanding of the vision and mission of the company, with clarity to the fact that they are also self-fulfilled with meeting the company's own corporate goal, and that's talent management. In the Abraham a, 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 a Maslow's hierarchy of needs. At the base of the pyramid is food, shelter, psychological needs, security needs. At the top end, at the tip of the pyramid is self-actualization. You need to study your people. What are their current needs? What will their needs be in some few years? Most of the time, when they grow, you know, they have promotion, bonuses here and there. You've given them a big car, you've given them access to loans, take care of their kids. The next in line is self-actualization. What is the need for me again? What am I looking for? What do I want to do? I'm not fulfilled. And when those thoughts start coming in, mm, it may be difficult to retain such people in the organization. So you need to think about giving them something else, something that will, you know, re-energize them. That'll push them further. That'll be like a turbo charger that push them further. 
So with the process also infused into the workplace that encourage innovation, team development, forming and sharing of ideas in relation to this, the technology as an enabler helps the company to synchronize all the three factors together to provide an expected result, which obviously meets the client's expectation and value for money. So we are here. It's important that we look at it. Looking at Paul O'Dear about the 80-20 rule. So 20% of customers deliver 80% of profit. So let's focus on 20% of our customer and that 20 percent may be our sweet spot maybe our sweet spot where we compete uniquely and differently so it's good for startup or living leading fm companies to rethink look at their processes get consultants seek for help we strategize go back to the drawing board go back to the table call your people Integrate that you can do bottom or uh, top bottom ma ma management style or process, whichever one works for you, to see how you can look into your systems and see what you can do. Just like Caterpillar, it's hard to run lean. It has to tell, it has to tell most of its people to go. Pick some people that are meant to be on the bus and those that are not meant to be on the bus, so that it can restart itself for the next level. This are uh, my references which uh, you can go through for further study to be able to understand the sweet spot of fm and how you can use it to kickstart your business if you are interested in starting a facilities management business go to from the outsets you need to know where you want to compete and which area you want to compete with so thank you appreciate your uh time for taking time to listen to uh this conference today to celebrate the world facilities management day thank you very much excuse me <clears throat> Oh, you mean it? Hello, thank David. Oh, yes, I'm mm. still with you. Thank you. That was that was deliberate and refreshing at the same time. I do have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, okay. First of all, one of the listeners writes, uh, "What can be done in the way of legislation uh, to curb the incursion of charlatans into into the FM field?" Okay. Um, for the le legislation, you. Like, for example, you need the backing up from the government to help uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that most buildings are facilities. Right? For example, in 2012, in America, former President Barack Obama, I think, signed into law a bill that every building, public buildings inclusive, must have facility manager. So that's, it does de deliberate. So in terms of legislation, if the government can sign that into law. And how will they sign that into law is by having a chat with them, letting them understand the, its importance, that how uh, its importance and its uh, fall over the resultant effect on the economy. Because if public buildings are properly managed, there will be no leakages. Money that is supposed to be spent and saving lives and helping other African countries or every other countries nearby in Syria, in you know, humanitarian projects and so on, in ensuring that we meet the 17 goals, the sustainable development goals, and so many other things. We can channel those resources there rather than wasting them in you know just building and not putting maintenance or facilities management at the back of our mind. So it's going to go a long way. If we do that, but you need to work with the government for them to understand. Remember, we are the professionals. We are educated in facilities management. And anyone that is not educated, we need to put the person through to be, on, to be able to understand the value FM can play. And also, professionals, facilities management professionals can jointly come together to drive that change, to make that move, you know, to be able to get the heads of the leaders of the decision makers will to achieve that. 
Oh, thanks. Uh, here's another. Can you give advice on how a consulting team can hold the sweet spot as a project goes forward and the client knowledge and expectations refine? Okay, um, for co consultants, you the, the, the first thing is to get your client's brief. What does your client want? And based on your experience, to be able to advise appropriately. Now, I said something uh, in the middle of the presentation that you're starting up an FM company or an FM department, which has never been in existence. You need to first understand which part, where do you want to play? So as a consultant, don't bring your own knowledge, just your own knowledge and load it over your customer. You need to educate your customer. See, this is FM, based on the brief I've gotten from you, I think this will work best for you because of this. Give reason, be scientific. Don't just be empirical based on your experience alone. Be scientific, do a lot of analysis, request for data, maybe past data of the activities or current activities, or based on the vision, what, what they really want to achieve and go through all that with the customer. So that the customer, you and the customer can be on the same page. Customer will be able to understand their strengths, what they have, the resources they have. Some may have, they can play uh, along, they can play with a lot of money, a lot of funds, they have a lot of money to do this. Some don't have much, they have little. So you can channel that and, uh, and advise them on how to start up their business, on how to play, on how to develop that department. So it depends on what the clients want, not just what you want as a consultant. It's important to be able to differentiate that and advise appropriately well thank you uh, i think we'll wrap it up now of uh, first of all uh, again our gratitude from actually your organization and ours fmcc and the stag team uh for your presentation today uh, next slide okay well uh, this one's not relevant at this point <laughs> because we're we're, we're just wrapping up. A next slide. Okay. Uh, FMCC does publish an app, and it's available um, for use at your fingertips. Uh, uh, you can download from the App Store. Go ahead. Next slide. And from FMCC Stag, once again, a thank you to each and all of you who attended. Next slide. There we go. Just a reminder that IFMA, uh, the contours of IFMA go, go across councils and communities uh, and, and quite a variety of them. Always worth a look. Next slide. And thanks for joining us. And we'll wrap it up at this point. I mean, I thank you very, very much.